Let's take a, a closer look at, at some of the, of the operation inside Ukraine and why Finland and Sweden uh, feel the need to ramp up their security. Defence and security analyst Michael Clark joins me now. And, and just looking at the map, it, as Deborah was talking about, it, it is the, the expanse of this border that, that will trouble Russia. Yes. Uh, I mean, NATO is 30 nations at the moment, and, and most of the nations that have joined recently that were desperate to join NATO have been the small ones. So the last two members were uh, Montenegro and North Macedonia. They had nothing in military terms. But Sweden and Finland had an enormous amount because of their maturity as states, because of what they represent. Sweden has been neutral since 1812 and has decided to change that status. Finland has been neutral since 1945. And the Finns, when they mobilise, they mean it. And their army is 200,000. That would make it one of the biggest armies in NATO. That's almost three times bigger than the British army. So when Sweden, when Sweden and Finland join NATO, then NATO's military capabilities will increase quite a lot. Uh, what about what's actually going on inside Ukraine? Uh, Deborah referred to some of the fighting there around Kharkiv. What, what's going on around Donetsk in this particular area? The yeah, Donbass? The, the, the Donbass offensive. Well, this big offensive is still building. The Russians are still build, bringing more stuff in. They're not really making much progress except around Papazna. But the most interesting development is um, further north, as Deborah said, around Kharkiv, because the Ukrainians are counterattacking to the north and the east of Kharkiv. And that is really complicating uh, Russia's communications because their communication runs from Belgorod in Russia right through Kharkiv to Izium, which is their northern anchor for this big offensive that they're pushing forward. And the point is that these counterattacks have put that communication line within artillery range. And so what the Ukrainians are doing is they're forcing the Russians to sidestep eastwards to keep their communication lines open. It's a very good example of Ukraine's type of defence, to find a weak spot and go for it. And what they're doing is they're, they're exploiting a weak spot, which is Russia's need to keep supplying from the Belgorod area into Izium. So they're pushing them sideways, which is not only good for Kharkiv, because it gives it a bit of a, a relief, but it gives Russia something to worry about further north from where they are making some gains around Papazna in the south. And what about Snake Island? It, that, that's one of the places that we heard about right back at the beginning of the war, wasn't it? Yes, day one of the war. Remind Snake Island, about, yeah. the, um, the Moskva. Uh, the flagship uh, captured all of the uh, uh, tr Ukrainian troops on Snake Island who told the Moscow what it could do with itself, famously. Um, and there is now another battle within a battle going on at Snake Island because the Russians look as if they're trying to reinforce it. Because we can see, as where Snake Island is, that can control the sea lines and the air defences of the whole of this part of the Black Sea. The Russians still are blockading Odessa and they will want to actually continue to blockade Odessa. But in order to reinforce Snake Island, they've got to bring their supplies from Sevastopol, which is down in the south of Crimea, a long distance, about 180 miles. But Snake Island is only about 25, 30 miles away from uh, Ukraine itself. So the Ukrainians are attacking these supplies that the Russians are trying to bring in. So already the Russians have lost, we know, a patrol ship. They've lost a, a landing craft. There were rumours last week that the, um, uh, the Makarev, which is a, a, a missile frigate, had been damaged. That's unconfirmed. The, the Ukrainians claimed it. May or may not have happened. We're not sure. But there is quite a battle going on as the Russians are trying to now reinforce Snake Island and put something valuable there. And the Ukrainians are in quite a good position to stop them. And we've been intercepting some, uh, some communications from the ships, the, the Russian ships, and they hate these Bayraktar drones that are flying around. They call them chandeliers because they're always above them. And if there's a Bayraktar drone above them, they know that a bomb could land on them at any moment. It really frightens them.